Welcome to study the Bible with me. Today we are starting the book of Daniel. So grab your Bible and let's dig right in. Daniel chapter 1. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand, with part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shina, to the house of his God, and he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God. And the king spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of his eunuchs, and his, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel, and of the king's seed, and of the princess, children in whom was no blemish, but well favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning in knowledge and understanding science, and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace, and whom they made teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. As the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank, so nourishing them three years that at the end thereof they made stand before the king. Now among these were the children of Judah, Daniel, Hanayer, Mashal, Mashal, and Azariah, unto whom the prince of the Enochs gave names, for he gave unto Daniel the name Belteshazzar, and unto Hananiah of Shadrach, and of Mishael of Meshach, and of Azariah of Abednego. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the Enochs that he might not defile himself. Now God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the Enochs. And the prince of the Enochs said unto Daniel, I fear my lord the king, who hath appointed your meat and your drink. For why should he see your face worse liking than the children which are of your sort? Then shall ye make me endanger my head to the king. Then Daniel said to Melza, whom the prince of the Enochs had set over Daniel, Hananiah, Meshale, and Azariah, Prove thy servants, I beseech thee, ten days, and let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink. Then let our continence be looked upon before thee, and the continence of the children that eat of the portion of the king's meat, and as thou seest, deal with thy servants. So he consented to them in this matter, and proved them ten days. And at the end of the, the ten days, their countenance appeared fairer and fatter in flesh than all the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat. Thus Melza took away the portion of their meat and the wine that they should drink and gave them pulse. As for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Now at the end of the day that the king had said, he should bring them in. Then the prince of the Enochs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. And the king communed with them, and among them all was found none like Daniel, Hananiah, Meshale, and Azariah. Therefore stood they before the king, and in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king acquired of them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were in all his realm. And Daniel continued even in unto the first year of King Cyrus. Chapter 2 And in the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar dreamt dreams, wherewith his spirit was troubled, and his sleep broke from him. Then the king commanded to call the magicians, and the astrologers, and the sorcerers, and the Chaldeans, for to show the king his dream. So they came and stood before the king, and the king said unto them, I have dreamt a dream, and my spirit was troubled to know the dream. Then spake the children to the king in, in Syriac, O king, live forever. Tell thy servants the dream, and we will shew the interpretation. The king answered and said to the children, The thing is gone from me. If ye will not make known unto me the dream, with the interpretation thereof, ye shall be cut in pieces, and your houses shall be made a dunghill. But if ye shew the dream, and the interpretation thereof, ye shall receive of me gifts, and rewards, and great honor. Therefore, shew me the dream, and the interpretation thereof. 
They answered again and said, Let the king tell his servants the dream, and we will shew the interpretation of it. The king answered and said, I know of certainty that ye would gain the time, because ye see the thing is gone from me. But if ye will not make known unto me the dream, there is but one decree for you, for ye have prepared lying and corrupt words to speak before me, till the time be changed. Therefore, tell me the dream, and I shall know that ye can shew me the interpretation thereof. The Chaldeans answered before the king and said, There is not a man upon the earth that can shew the king's matter. Therefore, there is no king, lord, no ruler, that asked such things at any magician, or astrologer, or Chaldean. And, at, and, at his, and it is a rare thing that the king requireth, and there is none other than can shew it before the king, except the gods, whose dwelling in is not with flesh. For this cause the king was angry and very furious, and commanded to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. And the decree went forth, and the wise men, that the wise men should be slain. And they sought Daniel and his fellows to be slain. Then Daniel answered with counsel and wisdom to Arioch, the captain of the king's guard, which was gone forth to slay the wise men of Babylon. He answered and said to Arioch, the king's captain, Why is the decree so hasty from the king? Then Arioch made the thing known to Daniel. Then Daniel went in and desired of the king that he would give him time and that he would shew the king the interpretation. Then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known to Hananiah, Meshale, and Azariah, his companions, that they would desire mercies of the God of heaven concerning this secret, that Daniel and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel answered and said, Blessed the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. And he changeth the times and the seasons. He removeth kings and sitteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. He revealeth the deep and the secret thing. He knoweth what is in the darkness and the light dwelleth with him. I thank thee and pray thee, O thou God of my fathers, who hast given me wisdom and might, and hast made known unto me now what we desired of thee. For thou hast now made known unto us the king's matter. Therefore Daniel went in unto Arioch, whom the king had ordained to destroy the wise men of Babylon. He went and said thus unto him, Destroy not the wise men of Babylon, Bring me in before the king, and I will shew unto the king the interpretation. Then Arioch brought in Daniel before the king in haste, and said, Thus unto him, I have found a man of the captives of Judah that will make known unto the king the interpretation. The king answered and said to Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, Art thou able to make known unto me the dream which I have seen, and the interpretation thereof? Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, The secret which the king hath demanded cannot the wise men, the astrologers, the magicians, the soothsayers, shew unto the king. But there is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets and maketh known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days, thy dream and the visions of thy, hand, thy head upon thy bed are these. As for thee, O king, thy thoughts came into thy mind upon thy bed what should come to pass hereafter and he that revealeth secrets maketh known to thee what shall come to pass but as for me this secret is not revealed to me for any wisdom that i have more than any living but for their sake that shall make known the interpretation to the king and that thou might, mightest know mightest know the thoughts of thy heart Thou, O king, sowest, and behold, a great image, this great image, whose brightness was excellent, stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. This image's, this image's head was of fine gold, his breast and his arms of silver, his belly and his thighs of brass, his legs of iron, his feet part 
of his feet part of iron and part of clay. Thou sawest till that a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet, that were of iron and clay, and break them to pieces. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken to pieces together, and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors, and the wind carried them away, that no place was found for them, and the stones that smote the image became a great mountain, and filled the whole earth. This is the dream, and we will tell the interpretation thereof before the king. Thou, O king, art a king of kings, for the God of heaven hath given thee a kingdom, power, and strength, and glory. And wheresoever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field and the fowls of the heaven hath he given it unto thine hand. And he, and hath made thee ruler over them all. Thou art this head of God. And after thee shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee, and another third kingdom of brass, which shall bear rule over all the earth. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron, for as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things, and as iron that breaketh all things, all these shall it break in pieces and bruise. And whereas, whereas thou sowest the feet and toes, part of potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in it of the strength of the, of, of the iron, for as much as thou sowest the iron mixed with mary clay. And as the toes of the feet were part of the iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. And whereas thou sowest iron mixed with mary clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of man but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is mixed with clay. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. For as, as much as thou sowest that the stones was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold. The great God hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter. And the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof sure. Then the king of Kadnezar fell upon his face and worshipped Daniel, and commanded that they, they should offer an oblation and sweet orders unto him. The king answered unto Daniel and said, of a truth it is that your God is a God of gods and a Lord of kings and a revealer of secrets, seeing thou couldst reveal this secret. Then the king made Daniel a great man and gave him many great gifts and made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon and chief of the governors over all the wise men of Babylon. Then Daniel requested of the king that he set Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon. But Daniel sat in the gate of the king. We are ending here today. Next time we're going to be starting from Daniel chapter 3. I'll see you then.